Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this session on uh, the session certification solutions provided by Synergetics. My name is Ashwini Shahane. I'm the president of the learning services in Synergetics. And um, along with me, my colleagues Napjoti and um, Om Prakash will be delivering this session today. So just a quick run through of the agenda. So we have um, learning um, skill and development landscape, and we look at how it has changed today. So as learning managers, what are the things that we have to deal with? Um, with the changes that are happening in technology, with the changes that are happening in the way people are learning, right? And what is the importance of certification and what is the impact it um, you know, has on the learning and skilling? Um, we as a solution provider, training solution provider, have a lot of um, solutions that we have created around certification. So a lot of gaps that are created, um, which are not available by the out of the box certification solutions. We are trying to bridge those gaps and ensure that a complete learning experience and skilling experience can be um, given to our customers. We'll have a Q&A about our solutions. If you have, if you have any questions, our um, technology AVP and delivery AVP, which is Napjuthi and Om Prakash are here to answer your questions. And we also wanted to give you as part of this session a brief insight into some of the emerging trends in technology today. And one of the most, um, you know, uh, heard term today is Gen AI or co-pilot and we wanted to give some insights into that and some of the solutions that we have created around these technology spaces. And then of course, lastly, a brief about why um, or what is the benefits that Synergetics provides and what value adds Synergetics provides if you go with us or choose us as your learning providers. So today, if you look at the learning and skill development, um, you know, landscape, it has undergone a lot of changes. First of all, technology itself over the last, I would say, decade has been changing rapidly. Right? Ten years back, we had the cloud wave. Um, we had the um, containers and uh, later on microservices. A lot of changes that are happening in the way applications are built, in the way solutions are created, and the kind of skills that are required of the, uh, our technical teams. Today, the latest uh, technology uh, that is you know, creating waves is Gen AI. Right? And of course, AI itself has been there for the last uh, four or five years today, and now it has become a uh, part of you know, mass um, um, adoption, right? But even within AI, the way um, things have got democratized is become, it's become available, accessible to almost everybody. And it's also become part of our day-to-day -day life. So uh, having skills built on some of these newer technology areas, how do we ensure that we can um, validate the skills that we are building in our teams has become very important. Of course, the way the learning happens today has also undergone a change. Post COVID, with um, you know a lot of people uh, working from home, we had to deal with a hybrid working environment and the way traditional training was being offered also underwent a big change. And everybody, um, and all uh, our customers and even us as learning providers um, you know had to adapt had to uh, adopt new techniques to make training which was remote delivery based more effective right so that itself has you know led to some new uh, learning methods like there's a lot of self learning um, material today accessible to everybody. Um, micro learning, which is um, you know a way of 
or learning in bits and pieces in small capsules has become very popular. Um, blended learning was a format that has gained popularity again because of the remote learning experiences. And uh, also, um, it's become more and more challenging to extract people uh, away from work, um, you know, away from um, productivity for, you know, four, five continuous days for uh, skilling or training them. So blended has become a model where it's a good mix of self-learning plus instructor-led face-to-face learning and um, how you can achieve the same kind of skilling results, but uh, by um, taking the resources away from their work as little as possible. So uh, while these changes are happening to the learning and skill development um, uh, that is going around, um, what has also become important is, of course, uh, employee recognition. Right? Um, ensuring that um, employee retention is there uh, with the way, um, like I said, um, people working from home, the in-person touch with employees has also become a challenge. And because of that, HR teams are challenged in how do you retain good talent? How do you increase productivity while you, know, you have a hybrid working environment? How do you yet, um, you know, um, ensure that your employer, employer branding is uh, sought after in the job market today. So uh, employee recognition has become a very um, um, you know, a key element of the training and development solutions that HR teams are thinking of today. And technical certifications is one way of, you know, uh, recognizing these skills, talents of technical teams. Um, so it validates the uh, capabilities that they have built. It improves the credibility of not only the individual, but also organizations. And uh, it is, like I said, a validation of the expertise that they have gained. So what is the importance of certification and what is the kind of impact that it has today? Now, with the way technology world is changing, it is becoming extremely important to be able to, um, you know, uh, build credibility for the uh, subject matter experts on various technology, um, new technology areas that are getting um, introduced, right? Uh, whether it is um, filling up gaps, because like I said, um, not um, or ensuring rather uh, with the, you know, uh, things like micro learning and blended learning coming in. How do you as an LND team keep track of how much learning has actually happened? And certification becomes one way of validating that their actual learning and skilling is uh, taking place. Um, it adds to employee retention, of course, like I've already spoken. Another important aspect for organizations today is a lot of OEMs today are making um, certifications as a requirement uh, to ensure that certain partnership status can be achieved by their partners and certain programs um, are made available only if the partners have um, the certified resources. So, for example, in Microsoft, um, you can become solution partners, uh, but one of the key criteria for becoming a solution partner in a specific area is also having the right number of you know, certified people in that area. Um, of course, professional credibility for individuals, organizations is also enhanced with the uh, um, certifications uh, being there. But in the process of ensuring that you certify your resources, as l &D managers, there are certain pain points that are faced by us, right? So whether it is ensuring that we are, you know, um, 
So, uh, Nakshati, if you go to the next slide. So, whether it is uh, recruiting certified professionals, right, uh, on the latest technology areas, and even technology skilling is becoming more and more um, specialized, granular, right? So, today we have um, uh, roles which are based uh, based on specific tasks of specific kind of work that the person is expected to play. So uh, that that person would be uh, expected to be highly skilled and is certified in that particular uh, specialization. So uh, recruiting certified resources, people, people who are already you know, uh, certified on those uh, specialized skills can be a challenge. So we would look at, you know, building organically building those certified resources. How do you build a competency framework? How do you build the learning paths? How do you provide the um, technology growth uh, roadmaps to your employees? Through certifications, you can build that. So but that is a pain point. So as an LND head, sometimes I may not understand this uh, technology landscape and how to navigate and you know which are the right certifications or which are the right uh, um, you know roadmap our team should have to build certain skills. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of investments that are made in uh, training programs in skilling or training the um, uh, employees but um, not not all of them actually uh, go and pass the exam. So how do we ensure that uh, the exam uh, is, is cleared by maximum people who have gone through the skilling? These certifications, the, the kind of certifications that are available today, that itself has become quite vast. Like I said, it's become more granular, more role-based. So adapting to this change in the way certification uh, itself is changing is um, something that learning and development managers sometimes may need help. Like today itself, um, uh, Microsoft has, you know, on like they have certifications, they've also announced specialized skills um, uh, that can be certified or badges that can be on for implementation skills. So while certification would test your knowledge uh, for implementation skills, yeah. you can have the um, skills framework that they are providing. Then uh, creating that pool of resources and how do you create it with, like I said, uh, minimizing the time that you take to uh, team away from the work commitments that the organization would be having. So how do you build different ways in which or different uh, work with different delivery methodologies that can help you, you know, achieve this with minimum um, time that your resources need to be taken away from their roles or their jobs. Okay. So there are a lot of pain points that Today, um, LND teams do face where certification is concerned or how to get uh, their team certified is concerned. So, Synergetics as a learning partner um, have a lot of uh, solutions that we have created around certification. And some of the solutions address a lot of pain points that are faced by our customers today. Some of them we have built after we have delivered some pilots for some of our customers and understood their pain points. Uh, hi. Uh, we can't hear you. Yes, so um, uh, some of them new. So we have built a lot of certification solutions. So let's um, uh, introduce you to some of the uh, very innovative certification solutions that we've built. And I would like to invite Napjoti Parua, who is the AVP of technology 
who's the author of these solutions to walk you through what are the pain points that these solutions address what is the solution what are the implementation of the solution and then some of the offerings that we have around each one of these certification based solutions so Nabjati, over to you yeah thank you thank you for setting the context for this today's uh, webinar uh good afternoon all of you hope uh, i am audible to you and it's good evening i guess it's uh, am i audible to you yes sir you're audible all right thank you so let me begin by putting this idea across about the solution as uh, my earlier speaker who talks about the few important points related to the pain, pain points like how organization is struggling or how organization is facing the challenges in terms of making their employee up and ready with the emerging technology the technology which is in today's context pretty quickly because it's not about making those people up and ready on a particular technology overnight because there are a lot many things goes into that entire process right from identifying the capability of a particular individual aligning with a particular role they are going to play within an organization subsequently creating a learning path for those people training on that learning path in order to achieve the parameters that were set in the beginning so this is a whole process you know the step by step need to be implemented within an organization to make your employees or uh, individual productive. So what we have realized and what we have started, uh, you know, conceptualizing that we are here to give solutions to execute the entire workflow step by step very smoothly. And that's how we have come up with the solutions. And certification solution is one of them. We have other solutions also, but the context for today's meeting is all about certification solutions. Now, I would like to kind of uh, take you through the few, uh, you know, maybe the, the pre-understanding about the certification solution. Now, you may have 10,000 people that you want to certify it on a particular technology for a particular role. They're going to play within an organization. Now, I don't have to kind of, you know, uh, talk day-to-day uh, -day implementations because you guys, you guys are more aware of, you know, uh, how you are involving with the day-to-day -day activities uh, for uh, imparting training or organizing training for your employees. But I'm sure that there would be a lot of challenges in a day-to-day -day, uh, kind of activity that you are conducting in order to make people productive. Like one of them would be a scaling. As I said, as I explained in the beginning, suppose you have hypothetically, I'm saying that 10,000 people that you need to train and you need to um, certify 10,000 people. So you need a structured learning, you need a complete learning path, you need a modular uh, learning path, you need uh, the combinations of uh, instructor led training or, uh, you know, uh, online online based training or maybe content based training so you know so eventually uh, you have to make them certified uh, pretty quickly uh, on the scale that what i'm talking about 
So our solutions is being crafted that way that you would be able to train thousands of people and certify them subsequently with the state of art, the content that we have designed under these certification solutions. Now it could be any certificate, any certifications that people want to uh, complete. Uh, so we have a complete uh, plug and play, uh, you know, the system. Uh, so that can be aligned to a particular role and we can, you know, kind of uh, execute that program uh, from that particular solution. Now, the one of the most important, uh, the point that I would like to emphasize from our certification solutions, it's completely a st structured learning. As I already explained that, you know, you don't need to ask anybody right from uh, the prerequisite, the people uh, uh, have to undergo before coming to a particular certifications, aligning people with the certifications, a technology, Right, so these are all is going to be a part of this solution, as you can see on on the bulleted point. And uh, you 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 will be realizing that you know uh, the the cost of uh, making them uh, productive uh, on a particular technology by uh, certify um, by, by by just acquiring a certifi um, certifications for all of them would be really, really um, inexpensive going forward. In, in, in terms of cost, uh, also I'm just trying to bring that point uh, at the same time. Now, when you, I do not want to go into the detail of the execution approach in a day-to-day -day basis from this particular solutions that we have designed. But yes, I will give you a brief uh, introduction of those bulleted points. So starting with uh, skill gap analysis, I already spoke about that. So if somebody is going to play a role within an organization, but uh, in order to uh, complete the certifications, to play that particular role and that person may have to undergo maybe a one or two day or one or two module. You know, so we have designed those module for every uh, role. You know, so you can plug in those module along with the certification. So we play a very active role. To, um, you know, eliminate the gap. That people have. Uh, and with that skill and make them certified on a particular technology going forward. And if you look into the delivery uh, point of uh, delivery point, so there are multiple components that delivery uh, is going to be uh, within the delivery. So there would be a certification week. So we have identified the number of days according the the length of the training or length of the, the durations for a particular certificate uh, certifications track uh, so that is going to be a certification week and of course uh, we are going to introduce if somebody wants to do a deep dive because how certifications look like in general because certification we is going to come up with a set of modules and that would be part of our learning plan. But if someone wants to know more about a particular module, so we have a, another, you know, kind of uh, extended training that we can plug in into the certifications. That would be a certification add-on, what I'm going to explain after some time uh, when I'll be talking uh, on that particular uh, product that we have. But yes, so we are keeping things very flexible like uh, it's all about learning so if people wanted to know more about a particular topic a particular technology from that particular certifications we have a plugin module we can bring in and people can undergo uh, with with that uh, plugin a uh, training the add-on training you know apart from that uh, the other um, the supporting component like virtual lab of course uh, 
uh, subject matter expert on that particular technology will be always uh, going to monitor the progress of uh, your uh, uh, the trainees and uh, the participants and of course like you know uh, the the entire uh, project plan of uh, making them certified would be a part of the learning deliveries now assessment is a typical uh, the components uh, going with uh, any traditional training like that is also incorporated here in the certifications because uh, how we get to know that people has learned what we taught you know so there would be a full assessment uh, we're talking about pre-test or post-test or different form of uh, you know uh, the assessment uh, to just to uh, analyze and creating a report on that you know how people are progressing during the training and that we can align with your uh, ultimate goal or ultimate objective for what that you have uh, conducted or you have organized that particular training. And apart from that, to boost everything that we have the LMS uh, system in place, and it's, it's like uh, more organically, uh, right from enrolling to a particular training, uh, till that person exit from the training, the entire the workflow would be recorded uh, in our LMS. So through LMS, the participant can uh, interact with the SMEs. You know, they can get help online uh, real time whenever they face some problem doing lab or a practicals or an assignment. So it would be kind of, you know, uh, the workflow that would be created within the uh, managed service within the LMS system. And of course, like uh, since uh, today's uh, scenario would be the hybrid work in that context also, we have instructor lit training or a VILT or of course the blended. They have to go through uh, some recorded videos or maybe some portals and collectively we'll put them together to complete the entire learning path in order to complete a particular certificate. So this is robust, I mean, uh, you know, uh, but yes, as I said before, I'm trying to give you a brief insight, uh, but yes, we are trying to incorporate all the component a participant required to successfully complete a program, you know, or course, and that is being incorporated here in the in the execution approach. So this is the extended of what I was talking about, not something new, but there are a few points that uh, can be emphasized like uh, mentoring. So mentoring is always critical, like, you know, the people may come back and, you know, uh, keep asking their queries, or maybe people wanted to know more about the topic that is being discussed in the classroom online or offline. So this is something is very, very, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, the important for the participations, uh, par uh, participant as well as uh, the owner of the, the program also, uh, because you want to ensure that that every possible way that we have to kind of give input to those participants uh, who have enrolled for certifications because the final objective would be passing the exam. Uh, not only passing the exams, so acquiring the knowledge uh, from those models that is being incorporated within the program. So this is a kind of uh, hand holding uh, the process that we have inculcated, uh, you know, when we thought of uh, these solutions, like, you know, going forward. And apart from that, they may need, uh, because it is uh, aligned with the examinations, because they may not have an idea what kind of question would be asked, although they may be prepared with the module, but practically when you put them in front of a question paper or maybe you know in front of an exam, so sometimes they may lost because they have no idea what type of question is being typically asked during the certification exam. So we will be giving complete uh, guidance and we will be having a bit of prototyping like with some sample question. 
uh, like for example, okay, the typically a certifications, they are going to ask the case study driven uh, questions like, so you have to have a better understanding to know the problem statement and subsequently you can go and answer those questions. So we'll train them only because our responsibility is not going to end only just to deliver a training to ensure that the, every individual who has joined uh, for the program certification program and they have to pass the exam. So as I said, there would be a practice test. There would be a kind of uh, the guided um, uh, input or maybe a small a session that we would be conducting for all of them that what they need to know before they actually go and take an exam. Right, so that is uh, yeah, I mean like uh, as of now we are only talking about the Microsoft certifications, but we are not only uh, with uh, Microsoft certification, so we are with AWS or we are with the GCP also, but the model would be the same. It doesn't matter. Uh, so what we am and that we are partnering with or maybe you are partnering with uh, or uh, the certifications that you want to complete from uh, which vendor it doesn't matter. Mainly if you talk about the cloud um, certifications at this moment we are um, on all three clouds, Microsoft certifications, AWS certifications, and uh, GCP certification. So just to uh, give you a, a quick, uh, again, uh, a run through uh, about different model that we have conceptualized that you may be interested to opt for, like starting with the guided self-learning. So the diagram says everything. So for example, uh, if you want to be uh, certified on a, a kind of role-based exam, so for example, that is AZ104, but in order to certify or in order to get into the AZ104, the participant need to know uh, the cloud fundamental, right? So because uh, while people would be attending AZ104, uh, we do not talk about the cloud fundamentals. So there may be few things, uh, maybe uh, go, will will go out of the context for the participants because they will not have any clue so how a particular service is behaving like this because they do not have the fundamental knowledge of that particular service so making no mistake we are creating a complete learning journey as you can see that from the fundamental to the advanced certifications and in this process like how they are going to, uh, you know, uh, go through the different, the stages or different phases, um, which is being described in this pipeline, including the orientation sessions, working with the HOL, which is really important uh, because if somebody do not do the practical implementation of what they have learned inside the classroom, so I think, uh, uh, it would be sort of uh, difficult uh, to say that they are in a complete learning mode once they will be completing uh, their uh, the course. So lab is critical. You know the lab is being incorporated here. And as I said before, also, so input they need to take an exam, whether it is AZ one zero four or AZ two zero four or maybe AZ three zero five. So the kind of uh, input they required in order to take an exam. So there would be a special sessions that we are going to keep for them and that uh, they exactly they are going to see what uh, we are going to explain. So they are not going to see something different uh, while they will be taking exam. The another one that is the blended in fact you know what is blended is i don't need to go and explain about the blended stuff but uh, yes this is how it be it is being designed 
starting with the self-paced learning with the Microsoft uh, online learning material. So we are going to provide that, you know, the module wise learning material that has come from the Microsoft. It is a very structured way of uh, learning module by modules, you know, uh, which is being aligned with the exam. Like here also we are talking about uh, AZ104. Uh, yes, the mentoring sessions. So this context already I explained before also, but mentoring is always critical. They need help in between because that would be completely new for them. The technology uh, would be completely new for them and uh, they need the mentoring. Uh, they cannot do the safe self learning in every topic because there are critical topic also. But although they won't be deep dive, but still, you know how those technology can be implemented in the real life scenarios. So in that context uh, or how, you know, uh, they will learn those technology in context of cloud. Uh, it would be completely different scenario for all of them because they will be moving from traditional on-premise system to the cloud system, the cloud platform. So this is a blended learning. And then going with uh, the instructor-led uh, training, that is what we primarily uh, uh, recommend because uh, it would be a kind of one to one contact with every participants. We will be given uh, input from the participants about the learning, about the progress, about the understanding. You know about what we have discussed, like alignment to a particular roles and so on and so forth. So in every steps, our trainer SME would be with them and take them through this complete journey until they certified on that particular technology aligned with a particular certificate. So having said that, the customer benefit like. Uh, yes, uh, you guys also. Kind of uh, maybe need a bunch of people to be certified on a particular a technology. Uh, to acquire a project. So when you are going to bid to your uh, a client, definitely client may have some prerequisite. So typically it would be a certified people. Suppose they need 100 certified people in uh, AZ104 in order to acquire a project on the infrastructure solutions on Microsoft Azure. And of course, it is it is not for your client also because uh, your employee is going to be feel proud about uh, their technology skill because uh, it is not about a randomly learning a particular technology because they can actually come up and say upfront that we are certified on a particular technology. It means that technically they are validated to work in a production environment making no mistake. So every employee is going to be uh, uh, proud of themselves because uh, you have took them through the entire process and make them certified and uh, make them available to the production uh, workload that they can actually work on the production workload uh, in a critical workload since they are completely aware of the technology. So that is the another uh, benefit of certification, uh, certific certification solutions, what I'm talking about. And uh, as I said before, also, I may not talk about only AZ104. There might be a varieties of technologies and that would be aligned with a particular role. But as an expert on the certifications, uh, and we know that, you know, how we can identify the people within your organizations and quickly. You know, uh, align with a particular certificate certificates that they have to uh, complete. Uh, because. Uh, it is important. The someone who is expert on a particular tech technology to recommend you, and that is what we are today. 
So we are in that particular stage that we can recommend you in context of certifications, right? So although we have a set of SMEs who expert on a particular you know, technology and those technology will go inside a particular certifi certifi certifications track and uh, we will be able to help you uh, organically uh, how you should be able to identify quickly and how you can put them inside the classroom and complete the certifications to play that role that you have designed for them. Now, uh, already we talk about in the beginnings about the OEM part also, because you may also partner with uh, different OEMs, so you may also going to bid to get uh, a different kind of assignment from those OEM, uh, right? So in that context also uh, to fulfill the prerequisite, so you need people on board. So certified people means uh, you have that credibility is to go ahead with uh, tying up with the OEMs, acquiring a projects and so on and so forth. So it's it is definitely a critical for every organization uh, that you you represent it today. <clears throat> right, so so these are the few. Uh, important things but the bottom line as i said you are making people skilled on a particular technology making no mistake they should be able to work on a production workload in a day-to-day -day basis and uh, whoever the oem they are going to endorse those people because once they are acquiring a certificate certificates on a particular technology so they are ready to go with this technology they're ready to take the challenges and their confidence level would be definitely going will will be will be high and morally also they will be in high and you know uh, they should be able to take any challenges going forward so eventually for you that you make them productive pretty quickly uh, by taking them through the certification solutions of what we are offering at this moment Now, along with the certifications of what I am talking about, this is very structured way of imparting trainings and uh, other requirements in order to certify them. But uh, so in, in on the ground, what happened? Because when the OEM designed a curriculum for the certifi certificates, suppose hypothetically I can take a certifications AZ104, which is uh, typically to do uh, the work with the infrastructure on Microsoft Cloud. But uh, when they have designed this curriculum, you know, they put some module in into the curriculum, but those module will keep on running, you know, maybe for six months and one year. But in between the six months and one year, extended to those module, the new technology or the extension technology will come into the picture like you know but uh, a, a certification course is not going to go and include that but since the new technology the new features new way of doing the existing technology is not being incorporated in a tip you know traditional certification so what we have conceptualized so we keep looking at the Microsoft new innovations and we keep subscribing to those new innovations and we keep aligning with our deliveries like you know we create contents we kind of you know start working um, on artifacts around the new things that is being incorporated in that areas like uh, in uh, for example uh, your uh, infrastructure solutions on Microsoft Cloud, that they do not miss out anything what is latest coming in, in, in that particular space. But while they will be doing a traditional certifications and those new things, those new innovations, they won't be able to learn 
But what today in a practical situations in on the ground that to get more benefit from your workload. So you want to always use the new technology. So new way of doing things in, in compared to what you have done before. So people need to inculcate with that kind of skill. So always look for the new in that particular space. And we are here to provide you the kind of <coughs> program that would be add on to the existing cert certification solutions. I will be more, uh, I will explain more uh, uh, detail in what exactly that I am talking about, but net net while people would be doing a particular certifications, they may have to miss out with the new innovations in that space, the new technology that has come from the same OEM in that space, but we are here to take them to the participant that they do not have to miss out as an additional program, as an add-on to the existing program they are going through. So that is what I have explained. So by doing that, what kind of benefit the customer is going to get? Of course, they would be updated with the new technology, the new innovations in that particular space. And of course, by doing new way of your uh, uh, solutions, so by doing, uh, by implementing new technology to your project will definitely bring the productivities you know, in context of performance, in context, context of the other parameters that you can definitely enhance. And the another important things, you know, so suppose you wait for some times and start learning that new stuff from the very beginning. So it will take some time. Because you have to go back and identify them on your own. So now you don't have to do it because we have already identified for you. So we have already a ready-made module for you. So the job that you're supposed to do to look for the innovations and look for the new technology in that particular space is done by us. And not only that, we have created a program around that. You just need to plug in that program along with the traditional certification. It will give you the tremendous benefit to the participants because they will fit feel good about it technologically, you know, because they are not lagging behind so what they are learning in today's context. So that's how we can call them is that they will be in a deep technical knowledge and the awareness will be the part of this program. Like, you know, they will be up to date with that technology going forward. So making no mistake, like, you know, missing nothing from that particular space. Now I'll give you a couple of example as you can see on the screen, like, you know, what we are offering with our certifications. But having said that, now I pick up one of them. So today we talk about the cloud platform. So now when you look into the workload today, it is not going to be precisely work with only one cloud platform like from Microsoft. So your workload is going to distribute it across the cloud. So now while we are talking about an infrastructure solutions on Microsoft Azure, and that person know how to connect a database from Google, how to connect a database from AWS. So we need to tell them the multi-cloud environments, how they can organically work across the multi-cloud to bring a productive solutions onto the table. Because this is how your solutions, this is how today's application is, because they are not going to go and use primarily a one cloud platform. So their services is being distributed across the cloud. So you must know how you are going to perform the task on the multi-cloud platform. So while you will be learning AZ104, because we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, cloud infrastructure, but what about managing the multi-cloud by using something called ARC, ARC, 
as you can say, I'm just taking an example. I'll give you an another example. Like suppose the people are working with the developer, people are attending a developer certification AZ204. Of course, the AZ204 has a set of modules. They have to go through those modules, they have to do the labs, and they will be up and ready with those modules. But today the new innovation has come saying that, you know, uh, the if you are a developer, you need to know everything about the cloud native development. So when you talk about the cloud native developments, the cloud de native development parameters and technologies are not collectively included into the AZ204. But as a developer, because AZ204 is a solution developer, you know, the title they are going to get as a solution developer. But they won't be, they are un, they, they are incomplete, like, you know, saying that because they do not know how to develop a cloud native application from top to bottom. So when you talk about application, it is not only an application. There are a lot of dependent component that you have to bring together to make that solution cloud native to get maximum performance or maximum productivities or maximum efficiency from your workload that you will be bringing into the cloud tomorrow. So we have those add-on program to make them specialize, not just certified, not just validating them on a particular certification track, but making them competent to deliver on the production environment. And that is something the add-on is going to, that is something the add-on is going to offer. So it is very critical because we do not want the participant to kind of uh, uh, not knowing the things that is happening within uh, the area they are working currently. So we are there, our SMEs, our experts are there to tell them, you know, so what is going on in that particular space and what they have to know? So how do these are the technology is directly related to what they are doing today. So I'm giving two examples, but yes, this is the same pattern would be applicable for rest of the add on program that you can see on the screen. Now the last or not least about the certification. So you may be aware of the hackathon. So hackathon is something is basically a going a deep dive. You know, so you learn a technology, you have implemented technology, that's perfectly fine. But how you are going to solve customer problem? how you are basically on the fly, you will be able to anticipate about the solutions in a particular problem statement within your organization. If somebody wants to kind of, you know, come up with the problem statements or use cases, so how you are going to go and implement then and there, because you are already trained on this technology. We already talked about the latest innovations in that particular technology. So putting them together in one place and going deep dive and implementing and showcasing their actual capabilities within the hackathon. And this is very exciting for me as well as because while I was creating this particular program, uh, because I can anticipate because, uh, you know, how people are taking hackathon today because this is very serious because it will take that particular individual or, or any participants to the next level because it's all about implementation it's all about deep dive in fact what we are doing we are very dynamic you know we are very dynamic in in the execution approach so i'll be talking about that few, you know in my next uh, slide but yes as i said hackathon is the ultimate program that we can think about today for the technology i mean technical people so 
certifications, add-on and hackathons. It's a complete, you know, the framework that we can, everybody can anticipate. Like after hackathon, what next? Nothing. Because when you participate in the hackathons, you will come with the problem statement and with our help, our SMS help, you will be able to solve that problem, the critical problem during the hackathon itself. And it will take you to architectural in input because in a typical AZ204 not talks about some kind of how you can design an architecture solutions. The hackathon is going to bring that point also, the best practices that you need to follow when you run your workload in a production environment. So making an individual a complete technologically up and ready to deliver on demand on today's innovative requirements is will be produced after attending this hackathon program. So it is all about problem solving. It is all about getting into the deep details of implementations of that particular technology. As I said before, also the execution approach. We have. Domain expert, we have SMEs and we will bring our own use cases and case study to solve within the hackathon and we also going to invite. The participants to bring their challenges that you are facing within their organizations to solve. So we are collectively going to solve them within the hackathon. Yes, it won't be a, the lengthy programs. It is not that you would be developing an end to end solutions within a hackathon, but you would be able to work with the prototypes, a kind of POCs that you are struggling within an organization to deliver. So within a couple of days, you'll be up and ready with that 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 uh, you know requirement going back you just need to go and more elaborate way of implementing them but yes already we'll be discussing that within the hackathon so how you're supposed to go and solve the problem back within your organization so like uh, add-on programs we have a hackathon along with a different Certifications, the certifications like AI 102, AZ 104, AZ204, and subsequently from the data platform also DP203. So these are the hackathon that we have at this moment, and more title is going to add into the list in a couple of days from now. So we are continuously working and conceptualizing this program, creating artifacts, making it ready for deliveries making no mistake. So getting into. Onboarding add on. So what. Uh, the add on program that I talked about. So when you say onboarding, onboarding is a very uh, kind of the familiar, uh, you know, the program for you guys. Since you are coming from L and D uh, today. Uh, but you know that what is a typical program for uh, the freshers, you know? So you may be uh, train them on a Java or maybe a full stack or maybe kind of dot nets or a Python's or a AI's or a, data platforms and so on and so forth. So you may come up with. Uh, we have uh, our onboarding program for the persona based onboarding because that is aligned with a particular persona. The role uh, that that person is going to play within an organization. But what is important this today is this. If you are in a inductions or if you are in a part of 
onboarding program. You must know the cloud platforms, the nitty gritty of the cloud platform, because the tomorrow you are going to learn big things on the cloud. So what we are doing along with the onboarding add on at this moment. We are going to kind of understand. What is the what is the purpose of? Onboarding training that you are doing for a set of people, so we are going to align with the latest technologies. From the cloud, as I said, it is not specifically going to work with the Microsoft cloud, all three cloud. We are taking on today. And mostly. As we said before, also the AI, especially on the generative AI part. So how the people, I mean, like when somebody is undergoing an inductions and an onboarding training, so we assume, we think that they should also know about the gen AI, generative AIs, the AI fundamentals, the cloud fundamentals that they can align themselves what next for them and they can prepare themselves to what next for them. So it's a kind of roadmap we can showcase. The kind of roadmap can be visualized for every single participants while they are attending the onboarding program. So our vision is right from the on onboarding to where they want to go. Identify the, the latest or emerging technology for them and giving them a glimpse of those technology, giving bit of insight to the technology, what for them, what for them next, what they are learning today. So they can also step back or you can also create some kind of learning path or some kind of, you know, the roadmap. The technology roadmap for every single individual within an organization. It's a it's a, it's a journey for all of them. So we are conceptualized a journey right from the day one when they step in in organizations to go to an hackathon doing all the kind of programs or completing all the programs to become a technologically sound persons and ready to face with the challenge within your organizations. Yes, eventually you will be making them productive. So in an onboarding add-on program, so we have conceptualized that yes, the new technology has to come to give them an update to make them aware of that. That what is next for them. So it could be a cloud, it could be a Gen AI, or it could be the relevant technologies, the emerging technology for them. So this is what again the another the programs, the another solutions that we have offering today with us. So these are the solutions I supposed to present today. And I hope. I'm able to make you understand what I'm talking about right from the certifications as a solutions, conceptualizing it. And then try to fill the gap of those certifications by. Bringing certification add on. Taking them to the next level. In that technologies by bringing hackathon. And then. I'm talking about from the inductions point of views, the onboarding point of views that they also need to align with what is happening around them, what is happening in technology world today and how they can see themselves a couple of years from now. So this is a roadmap and that is getting implemented with our own program and solutions backed by the artifacts, backed by the 
content backed by the SMEs, domain specific SMEs, you know. So this is what I am currently working and I'm responsible for everything, what we are going to take it to, to you and make people productive. So with that, the first part of the presentations I want to conclude here and I would like to know from you. So do you have any questions till now what I was explaining? It's all yours. Anybody, any questions? Yeah, you can go to the team chat also. You can respond to me if you have any questions or you understood what I was explaining about our solution so far. Hope you are with me. OK, I don't see any questions. I don't see any hand raise. Uh, all right, so I'll go to the next one. <clears throat> As we have already incorporated in our agenda talking about the Gen AI. So we have upcoming offering on Gen AI also, but we want to take it separately at this moment because it is pretty new. It is emerging at this moment. And we have complete separate product line for Gen, e Gen AI for you. But before I take you through a list of product that we have, offering that we have, the solutions we have, I just wanted to give you a bit of background about Gen AI why the Gen AI is important today. Now, if you talk about artificial intelligence, it's not something new to us because artificial intelligence is being implemented by every aspect of our life. And in every industry, you know that. And artificial intelligence is backed by machine learning and deep learning. You know, these are the underlying technology who enable the artificial intelligence for our end user, for our customers. But today we talk about a Gen AI, just generative AI. So the main difference between the traditional AI and the generative AIs is all about the capabilities and the type of applications today we think with Gen AI. So the kind of capability that Gen AI is offering today and the kind of applications that we can develop using Gen AI, and that's how they are different. So in a traditional AI systems are primarily used to analyze data and make predictions. But in case of generative AI, we'll go one step ahead by creating new data similar to its training data. So it means 
you can create data, you can create content by just telling what kind of content that you need without thinking about the training, what we did before with training. But I do not want to go into the technical detail of that because the only bottom line what I want to draw from this presentation is that the Gen AI is going to make everyone's life easy. So the philosophy behind the Gen AI is do less, get more. So in that context, in that note, so people need to quickly get on onto the Gen AI because organization may be looking for that only, that they want to do less and get more. Right, so spending time with the traditional AI doing things what you're not supposed to do today with the Gen AI. The most of the things would be out of the box, but you have to be very careful and you have to be known to the technology or you need to know the technology how you're going to use subsequently. So benefit of generative AI can be seen across the different business, different domain. So eventually, as I said, it makes it easier to interpret and understand the existing content. And automatically create the new content. So it's a very advanced technology in today's context that everybody need to aware of this technology that they can quickly go and incorporate them. to their project. Now few component, as I said, this is, I again, it's, it's a bit of technical that I'm going, but yes, just giving you an insight about the component of Gen AI. As you can see, there's a language generations, code generations, image generations. Like for example, I, I just take an example to just to give you a, uh, or context of this particular deck that I'm presenting. Suppose somebody is a developer and they may uh, struggle to write a code to solve a problem. So they may be struggling for last couple of days or last couple of weeks, but they are not able to crack that code to do something they're supposed to implement in their project. So in that scenario, the AI can AI can come and help that person, that developer, by generating code for developer based on what is being asked by the developer. So they don't need to struggle. They don't need to keep, you know, doing R and D or keep writing different code and which eventually fail. So they are going to get a code which is typically solve the problem. They might have struggled for a couple of days or a couple of weeks in the past. So that kind of productivity, that's what I say, do less and get more. So you not even written the code, but the code has pop into you out of the box. You just use in your applications. So your application is now using the code which is generated by Gen AI. That kind of productivity is that, that that the Gen AI can bring into the table. So there are multiple use cases uh, from the Gen AI, but again, like until we go and implement, until we go and talk detail about those, since uh, it is not a technical session, but I'm setting a context of how important the Gen AI could be in coming days. And our employees 
need to be aligned with this new technology because this technology is definitely going to create differentiations. What we have been doing for so many years is and how we are going to do things from now onwards. It's a complete different things. And it's not only being targeted only a one domain. So it would be made available in all the domain and which already done. So what we have at this moment, so we are in a very primitive one. So we are also extensively working on the Gen AI. We have been delivering sessions on the Gen AI. We have been taking customer feedback. So how we can take, how we can, you know, help them in order to implement the Gen AI in their a project and so on and so forth. And people are with uh, coming back and talking and, uh, you know, taking advice from us, like, you know, what would be the next can be done on their existing product from the gen ai point of views and this is the work like you know is a kind of research work that we have been doing for last couple of months and maybe more than a year so we are into it and we are now quite capable and going a market with our credibilities with our own program that we are going to offer. And again, that would be a complete structured learning with our own artifacts, with our own content. Knowing your requirement, aligning with our deliveries on Gen AI. So we have a different program for the developers, managers and sales at this moment how to implement or how to use gen ai for those uh, the role uh, within an organization but to just to make it very concrete like you know uh, that you also need to know, you know what uh, is there for us so suppose if somebody is doing a devops course and they need to know github copilot what i was talking about the github copilot will assist of uh, generating code and putting into the GitHub and taking it to the deployment uh, environment. The prompt engineering, what we discussed some time back, because you can ask questions that would be coming as a prompt and you know, uh, you are going to get response uh, from, from your prompt. So you tell what you need, that's all about prompt. Chat GPT also in a different form, right? So mainly the conversational, uh, the form of implementation. So you can start asking questions on a particular uh, domain and your uh, application is going to keep replying and you can keep going into that threads one after another, going from one level to another level. So PL100 with the GitHub Copilot as well as, uh, yeah, I mean like uh, for AI with the open AI service. As of now, we are only talking about the Microsoft, but yes, that would be replicated to uh, other OEM certifications and the respective uh, open AI uh, technology. So in the space of onboarding, I already talked about that because we do not want to kind of deprive those people who has just getting to know technology uh, in detail, like, you know, so maybe from induction point of view. So we are going to give insight to the Gen AI to uh, to, to the, the training in the from the induction also, the onboarding also. So it will make a complete uh, kind of onboarding because we don't left with anything what is happening around us. All the people may be, as I said, uh, may be uh, preparing on a particular technology, but uh, the related implementation of this particular technology from the open AI need to be known because that is what tomorrow's for them. So today they need to anticipate. So what is there for them? that they can align themselves and start talking about those technologies and that will come bigger way 
in the coming future, in the, in, in the near future. So this is what all about our offering so far, what I am explaining uh, as of now. I hope because I'm just <laughs> anticipating that you are getting what I'm talking about or you are able to kind of understand what I'm explaining about our product, our solutions, our strategy, our values, our credibilities. You know, so a lot of effort has gone to create this kind of solutions and putting things in place. Now we are ready on those solutions and we need just go ahead uh, from you guys if you liked it, if you kind of give value to this, what uh, I have been explaining so far. And then uh, we should be able to take our conversations to the next level. So again, the last question, because I'll be handing over my presentations to Om Prakash. So he will be coming in this moment and talk about a bit about uh, synergetics and uh, the kind of values that we are going to add to our extreme client like you going forward. Thank you, WT, sir. Yes, thank so you. Let me take it from here. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody has got the point across, which Ashwini ma'am and Nabdi sir has mentioned over here. Taking you all through to the last aspect and very, very important element of this entire session. As part of synergetics, how do we add value? So we have been talking about our solutions. We have been talking about the execution approach. Now, what makes us capable of understanding the nuances, understanding the challenges in the industry. We have been an organization from last three decades. We have been working with multiple OEMs across the industry. We have been making sure we have our outreach to a number of global partners with Microsoft and a lot of other vendors we have been working with. And we have never been focusing only on a single set of technologies. Our entire, entire organization is focusing on group of technologies and we have segregated them into various practices where we have .NET, Excuse open me. source, where we have other areas like AWS, data and analytics space, right? So there are a number of practices that we have not to forget about infra and collaboration space. So with this diverse technical experience that enables us to understand and leverage on whatever new is coming in the industry and make sure we go to our customers, we go to our <coughs> colleagues who are who have been working with us for a very, very long time and ensure that they get aware and they are prepared on addressing these new era challenges. So we are, I would say, partner in the enablement, not partner in crime, but partner in enablement of lot of people that we are hiring on day to day basis. And when we hire these people, we are taking guarantee that boss, I will help you in your career. I will make sure I take your help, address the customer challenges. And at the same time, we would want to make sure you become best. And like Nabil sir mentioned time and again, they have to be great solution developers. They, they have to be solution architects going ahead, taking from technical architects to solution architects to enterprise architects. That's the journey that they have enrolled with us. And 
the most important aspect over here is making sure we work together to achieve their dreams. Now, how this is made possible? How are the how this is being done? So as part of synergetics, what we have is we have a large pool of full time dedicated trainers with us who are also parallelly working in number of consulting projects. So they have this real world experience of of understanding the customer problems, designing a solution, implementing it, right? And also making sure the new releases that are coming up, they are aligned to those releases. Now this with this end to end experience of dev uh, designing, developing and managing these projects, these gives our team members confidence, our SMEs confidence in going to y'all and saying, boss, if you have hired people, if you have promised something, we are here to help you achieve that set promise. And like uh, Nadir sir mentioned time and again, this will be done via a structured approach, right? With three decades of experience that we have, what we would want to do is make sure we bring that experience, bring that expertise during the day to day execution. And once it comes to generative AI or once it comes to number of other certification add ons, this is something which is a cross cutting aspect which I see across various areas. And by using number of practices that we had have at our end, we have that expertise which is across multiple technology areas. With our global customer relationships with Microsoft, IBM, AWS. So we are making sure that our team members are not just aligned to a single technology. Yes, they should be specialist in a specific technology, but they should have knowledge on other areas as well. Say, for example, if I have a SME, the SME may be deep dive in terms of Azure development, but at the same time, they would also look at how this development process happens within AWS or GCP for that matter. And we have resources who are multi skilled and certified on various cloud areas, various technology areas as well. We are a trusted leading partner from Microsoft. So some of the points that we mentioned earlier regarding number of certifications and how they are critical from a long term partnership point of view or renewing the partnership every year that comes from our own experience. So we understand the significance of certifications and how it plays a vital role in a long term association with the OEM. We would be here to assist you in building that kind of association. And if you have a certain number as a LND head or a, as a business head, if you have certain number on your on your KRA or or KPIs, we can work together to help you achieve that, right? By building number of certified resources as you need year on year. And my colleague Vedan Vijay, they are the ones who will be providing you more details in terms of how we can engage in terms of exam vouchers or the certification courses, right? The lab on demand resources so that people are not just experienced getting that knowledge per se, but also from an implementation point of view. From a value proposition, the unique value proposition that we have is the concept visuals. So whenever we get into a training session, the first thing that we would want to do is we would want to explain what this entire environment is all about. Why is it required? What are the key things that is expected or uh, why would somebody want to should learn this particular technology? Right? So what that helps people do is it addresses lot of concerns. Even be even before we go to our first slide or even uh, if it is a VLT session or even if we take up the first example. So making sure setting the right technology context for them. Which will help them what to expect from a technology. What resources can be built over here? 
I don't want to get into too many details of delivery methodology, right? Because today we are ready to deliver sessions across the board in any format that is required by the customer, whether it is in person, in class, ILT, VILT, blended. The way customer wants us to help them or work with them, we are thoroughly prepared with it. And all our SMEs are aligned to the same as well. Now, apart from concept visuals, what also will be required for them is understand the architecture is good, but what next? Can I do a small POC or can I try out a small example myself to learn how that specific library works or how that particular DLL works? Those things will be part of the active experimentation. Once we go beyond that point, that's when comes the big assignments, combining multiple learning aspects together as a active development, case studies, right? And there are certain areas in terms of architecting where we may not have coding, but there will be sort of role plays that every individual would do. So one of the uh, team members would, would behave as a designer, second would behave as a database uh, engineer or DBA, Another member would behave as a developer. So each of them will be putting on different hats as part of the discussion and they will be sharing their expectations, requirements with the team members, right? So number of project titles that we have been doing in past, you all must be referring it as capstone project, gladiator, right? Or whatever name one would want to use. But what this helps people do is, it helps people come together, understand the given problem statement, create respective design artifacts, create appropriate execution plan, distribute that execution plan with the team members that we have and making sure all those elements get created and finally it has to integrate and work as a single unit. So same thing which happens on the shop floor, we get the participants ready with that kind of experience using agile methodology, scrum methodology, using Kanban boards, right? Like uh, we, we mentioned earlier in terms of Azure DevOps, we can make use of Azure boards or Jira depending upon what is the customer's expectation. And we make sure that our training methodology is aligned to the set of tools, processes which is used within an organization. So when I'm mentioning about this, my focus is to make sure you, once the training is being done, they are ready for the shop floor. So there should not be an additional training required after they have gone through our training methodology because, and if that kind of transparency is there between our team, when we are building the solution for y'all, right? We can, y'all can bring those nuances to us. And we would make sure that all these things are diligently followed from day one. We have right set of SMEs who are being uh, trained, who are being told, informed, and there's a complete tracking mechanism which is being done. Whether all the promised art aspects and artifacts are being traded on digital basis. I remember the way. Yeah. Isha, any questions you have? I don't. I'm not sure if she has left the mic open. Sorry, guys, for inconvenience. So, what I was mentioning about is creating diverse offering, or I would not say it's it's an offering. Actually, it's a solution, right? So, when you are targeting a specific problem and having a right set of components added within it, I would want to term it as a solution which is made for a specific set of audience, specific organization, and targeted towards achieving a objective, right? And these kind of solutions offerings we can create for practice development or focused training program. Now, it may not always be for onboarding. See, onboarding is one juncture where, where organizations start with. There are training requirements also for laterals, people who are getting from technical architect role to a solution architect or enterprise architect role. So we are here to assist you all in 
all those aspects as well. Let's get into the next very important section over here. I hope most of you all would find your exact solution. That you are looking for. So in terms of our engagement model. The first aspect that we have is educate. Which is. The key area for every LND manager. As part of this educate engagement model, we can. Help providing executive brief for your views for your uh, top management teams, right? We can work together on that. We can conduct a technical workshop. We can conduct a emerging technology workshop on generative AI or any other certifications that one would want. We can showcase readiness certification readiness plan for the entire year. By working with you all. Right, because every organization would have their own set of objectives. Like uh, Ashwinir mentioned earlier, you all might be targeting some of the OEM partnerships going ahead, so we can work closely on that. We can have architecting workshops. In recent days, I have been working extensively with OGAF for enterprise architecting for number of international organizations. We specialize into onboarding training. And since virtual sessions are fading out, more sessions are happening in an ILT mode and everybody knows the advantages of that, so I would not want to reiterate on that point. The second important element that we will see over here is advising where once these people are prepared, they have done their capstone project, ladder projects. Now they are working on real world assignments, right? Now real world assignments would require cloud data center design, replatforming, application modernization. See, there are a lot of new things coming into market. Generative AI or co-pilot, right? Prompt engineering. How am I going to use these things within my real world project? How is it going to make sense for my organization? If I have to migrate some of the content from on-premises to cloud environment, how should I go about doing it, right? So this is where we can engage. We can work together with respective business teams, with the development deployment teams, do data state management, do data uh, replatforming, data center modernization. So these are the areas where we can work together. This is the second engagement model. We have a complete team of uh, 50 plus consultants who are working with leading banks within India who are working with various pharmaceutical organizations. And like I mentioned earlier, we have both the teams where we have consulting team and learning services team. So most of these advisory aspects are being taken care by learning services and consulting team together. From an implementation point of view, data migration, VM migration, modernization of applications, right? Management of resources. So these things are taken care by the consulting team. And even in case of long term management handling of tickets, if certain things are uh, not working as per the expectations, right? This is where we have our consulting team playing a vital role. So using both these team services, making sure your objectives are being met within the organization. That's the motive or that's the E intent that we have when we are working together. I want to take a pause here because there is <laughs> too much of content. So anybody any questions on any of these points? You all can take your time. That's not an issue. You all can connect to Vedant or Vijay from our side regarding any of these services. Getting 
deep dive into offerings within learning services so if you look at the previous engagement model this was a pretty uh, vast as a subject and there are so many teams the entire almost entire organization comes into uh, purview there but if you focus if i focus specifically on learning services and since this is something which is very very close to your day in day out activities that you are doing this is how we can collaborate and work together whether it is in terms of content development creation of questionnaires verification of questionnaires mcqs case studies assignments that you all might be giving to the uh, to to your uh, students or the new team members who have joined your organization right verifying your lms contents since we have great amount of experience on how to create good amount of content on the lms resources right so we can assist you all in the content development piece learning delivery is our another forte that we have been working with ashwini ma'am and navjyoti they have already mentioned about various details regarding learning delivery learning administration creation of plans over here now this is will be a, a very very important aspect because if you are trying to take bunch of smes to a new road map or uh, help them uh, become a productive resource in a specific area how should we go about what should be the uh, topics that they should go through what kind of projects they should uh, try out what kind of pocs or small projects they should build there is a complete design which needs to be done that would be part of the learning consultancy right now if we have hired say thousand folks not all of them may be aligned with the organization objectives or there may be people who are who are learning at different pace some of them may be slow some of them may be fast right so finding out such people and having right set of consulting or right set of communication with them boss you are not up to the mark or you need to be aligned or given to some other team right which is which is be more uh, beneficial to you right and it will, which will be beneficial to the organization as well that's where we have this learning assessment and analytics reports being given now if we give these kind of reports at end of the um, 30 30 days content that's actually useless for an ld manager correct if these kind of reports can be given to them on a weekly basis that that actually gives chance to the sm to the student right to the employee and also to the trainer and also to the lnd manager so all three can come together discuss what is going wrong and i i will be very open to this at times we mean we may need to change the approach the faculty is taking or the sme is taking the classroom very much possible they the person may have to come down and make sure they understand come to the level of how the employee can understand those things right so it is either ways the feedback is being taken to make sure every candidate in that classroom is successful so using these kind of analytics reports which is coming from the participant for the trainer and from the trainer for respective participant and both of them can work together to make sure the right course of action is being taken for that individual right so these are set of key entities that one would uh, that we are going to use to make sure our offerings that we have the solutions that we have given are being resolved correctly and they are working fine we can take up these entire resources as part of a managed service where an organization can outsource their entire learning to us and we can handle those at our side right i have already mentioned the details over here in terms of each of these offerings i am sorry i forgot about the video contents as well because lot of learning right right now is happening via 
the video based contents as well verification of video based contents creation of such contents so all these things is taken care by us i already mentioned about the learning assessments learning analytics feedback administration so how is an individual performing right and these will be weekly reports so that immediate actions can be taken from corrective measures so this slide <laughs> is more to tell you all that yes we know your pain points we have been through our journey we have been through our struggles as well making sure i i have maximum number of people who are certified and they keep renewing their certification time and again and with change in various oem expectations their requirements and to make sure we continue our partnership making sure the entire team is coming together and they are doing these certifications at right time so being a avp delivery at synergetics i have this pressure as, as you all you all might be having at your end as a lnd manager so when i have this pressure at my end so how i work with my people i can bring that experience and expertise and make sure year on year we can have the right number of people being certified on various technology areas this is the another way how i can put up this slide is this is our credibility which gives us confidence that we can work together on each of these areas whether it is data and ai app innovation infrastructure services right and you'll see this is in terms of training services and also from consulting perspective from learning solutions point of view navjyoti has already mentioned quite a few details over here from perspective of onboarding add on and what is an add on solution he mentioned about the hackathon in more details he mentioned about the persona based onboarding one of the key members within that i mentioned about the lateral training which is part of the reskilling learning solution no one of the areas that is that we also provide services on is doing a sales pre sales training based on our experience of last 30 years there is lot of trainings which are coming today which is more from developing individuals developing resources who should be uh, techno sales kind of people people should know technology and at the same time how do we sell that technology right there is a bit of solutioning here in uh, solutioning also involved here but these pre sales folks may not be too deep dive technical but they are sufficiently technical to create bill of materials to create a, a first first draft poc content have a solution uh, pricing estimates being created right so we have been doing lot of these sessions for our for uh, different organizations within microsoft outside microsoft and what we have seen is this requirement keeps coming again and again so i'm not sure if these kind of requirements exist within your organization we can work together on those on those areas as well after building 7 to 8 praxis within our organization we have realized that these these are the set of steps that needs to be done to create a new practice within a given organization and that's what we term as a practice playbook what steps needs to be followed what kind of components would be involved to make sure we enable an organization on a specific practice so this brings to end of yeah 
uh, my presentation. You, uh, yeah, thank you. OP sir for your uh, explanations about uh, synergetics and uh, beat of solutions and how we serious about everything that we do uh, for our customers. So uh, with that, we have come to our uh, end of the presentation. And once again, I want to go back to all of you. Uh, so we have primarily talked about the three things. One, what are the challenges any organization is facing, especially the LND team is facing in order to make people up and ready on a particular technology and taking them to the emerging technology. So that is what the first point that we discussed. The second point to address those challenges, we come up with our solutions. But at this moment, we are only talking about one solutions, that is certification solutions. But the certification solution itself is a robust one because it is not just talking about a traditional certification. So we talk about add-on, we talk about hackathon followed by the cert certification. And we have the program designed for the onboarding also because we started realizing that the people need to know the emerging technology, not in a deep dive, but still they need to know what is happening around them. So in keeping that context in mind, we try and add the relevant portion of the emerging technology to give the basic insight to that technology. So while they will be working with their own technologies from the induction's point of views. And eventually we end with the third one we talk about, like how we are responsible for taking all the solutions to you. What are the framework that we have at Synergetics in order to <clears throat> execute all of them, what we have been discussing so far. So with that, we are winding up today's presentations. Uh, again, I'm coming to you for the last time if you have any questions. So you can open your mic and you can talk to me directly or you can post your questions. Or if you have any questions that you want to ask after the session also, you can definitely contact Vedant. He is there. So he is coordinating this particular presentation. Hope uh, uh, we are able to give uh, the insight to what we are offering to you and hope uh, uh, you understood everything that we have spoken about. So with that, uh, I would like to give a big thank you to all of you uh, for attending uh, this webinar, uh, letting us uh, present uh, the what we supposed to present. And the final, has... yeah, so finally, I want to invite Ashini Madam to to just to give her the conclusion remark. Hey, I hope some of these certification solutions that we have have excited you. Please do reach out to us, like Navjuti said, uh, for any certification training needs or skilling needs mm -hmm. that you may have or any emerging technology uh, requirements that you have. We have a great team of in-house trainers who are equipped with all the uh, technology areas across multiple practices. Uh, we are also excited that we'll be uh, having some great uh, uh, events for learning managers, especially on emerging technologies like Gen AI and Copilot in the coming uh, month. So do look forward to that. We will look at uh, and introduce you to what are the um, what is the technology um, you know, uh, innovations that are happening there and what are the areas that uh, should interest organizations and uh, should have them thinking about building skills and building expertise on. So thank you once more from the entire team for attending this session and. Uh, Looking forward to you know delivering many more events for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you once again, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for joining in today.
thank you for the session good evening everyone thank you thank you very much everyone Please uh, take a moment and uh, fill out the feedback form if possible.